Welcome back to the Shack News E3 2018 booth here in the shadows of Nintendo and Sega's booth in West Hall. We have a very, very, very special guest from Media Molecule, Mark Healy. Thank you for stopping by this booth. Thank you for making the time. I know you're very busy here at the Pleasure. show, a little jet lagged. I'm, my body's here, but my brain is <laughs> a up, lot up there lag, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so how far jet. did you have to travel for the show? Uh, I came from England, okay. so I don't know how far away that is. Across like, the sea it's somewhere. It's like an eight-hour difference, though. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, so that's rough. I should be in the middle of dreaming right now. <laughs> well, this you is, should this be is like the, a dream, actually. You should be in the dreams. And you yeah. know what? This is kind of a dream-like booth, you know? We have a we have an eSports tournament happening, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's framed pictures of dogs and Steve Gibson, you know? It's, it's, it's a different place. So you've got a very controversial vote going on over there. Yes. This we are your... having the epic showdown between my dog, Lola, and my video editor's cat, Nessie, oh, cat for chair pet dogs. of the board. Yeah. It's a power struggle for the board of directors <laughs> Who's at Shaq winning? News. Who's winning? Determine the future of Shaq News. Really? Like, which leader do you really want? <laughs> you know, and I clearly I'm biased. I love my dog. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, I got to try out Dreams at Judges Week. Yeah, I remember uh, that. You yeah. know, we, that's when we met. We actually had an interview there. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. you making more time to talk to us because I love this game. And oh, I don't know great. if it's even a game. Uh, would you? How would you describe this? How would you describe Dreams? Is it a game? Is it an engine? Is you, it a gamified engine? You could describe it as a, a collection of games, if you like. Uh -huh. um, because the point is, it's going to be an ever-expanding universe of games or movies, music. But um, crucially, you get the tools with it to make your own games and music and films. So, yeah. So if you're not interested in creating, then. Yeah, it's a collection of games that you can go and play, and there's just going to be crazy stuff there. But if you're interested in creating these things, then you've got everything you need there to make your own stuff. So a lot of uh, the, the demo was levels, experiences, games that were created by your staff with Dreams in the game. Yeah, so obviously the idea is that once we release it, we hope that a community will embrace it and start creating all kinds of madness. But at the moment, our community is our team at Media Molecule. And we're, during the day, we're making the tools and making a, a campaign that comes with the, with, the, um, with the package. But these people are going home at night and then making their own things as well. So we've got a little bit of a glimpse into maybe what the community might look like. Do you have a feeling that it's going to be like Little Big Planet, where you got you folks created this these, this tool set and a, a universe for people to experiment in, and then they did things that you never thought was possible? Oh, I, I really hope, yeah, hope so. Because the the amount of tools and the depth of each menu set and everything, every little thing that you've created in this game, I just. I'm sure there's going to be tons of unintended, unintended consequences from this. Oh, I sincerely hope so. That's the, you know that's, that's that's the day I'm waiting for. When, once we release it, I'm just going to sit back at home and just watch these things pop up, and it's, it's just going to. I'm, I'm just so looking forward to that. And you've been working on this game for six years. Oh, uh, five years. Per, yeah, personally, I've been on it for about six years. We started off as just a, a small handful of about three or four of us. R&Ding, and then we've gradually ramped up to the full team now. So um, six years sounds like a long time as well to to make a, a game. But um, I would argue if I could sit down and show you everything that's in Dreams, you'd be like, how on earth did you do it in such a short amount of time? Yeah, because there's a lot in there. Yeah. And it seems like uh, at, during the design process, you ran into problems and then created solutions. Is that part of the, the iteration process of your design philosophy? Yeah, sure. I mean that's. In my experience, that, that happens with anything, yeah. any, any game that we're making. Um, but yeah, with, with Dreams, what we're going to be releasing is actually Dreams version 2, really, because we got to a stage with it where it was kind of doing what we wanted it to do, but we needed to rewrite the whole thing, because mm -hmm. quite often the way you get to those points is very sort of ramshackle, you're sticking bits on the side, and then you get something that kind of shows you what it is you were thinking of and it's like right we know what we're making now so let's remake it properly you know one thing i, I found fascinating is uh when i did my demo at judges week uh that you could like create something that wasn't even a game you could just create a video experience like almost like a tv show within dreams yeah yeah sure so i mean one of the things that i really love about the video games industry is it's a real melting pot of 
all the other arts you know you've got uh, film music animation artistry sculpture every, even lighting you know it's it's a real kind of gathering of all these different kind of disciplines um, and yeah and we've we've tried to you know supply tools that cover that whole range so you've got a music making tool in there you've got animation scene assembly you, the whole thing so you could make a film if you wanted to or maybe you could make a cartoon series or a game or an interactive film or hopefully something that we've not even thought of yet some new genre of media that doesn't even exist possibly who knows yeah and i think there's like a the, the art style is definitely informed by some of your past uh titles but it this game looks different yeah. than most other games this is your own engine correct? yeah so um yeah, we've got some amazing... Well, we've got... Our engine department is basically one person, actually. A guy called Simon. Wow. Really? He, he's a, yeah, he's a genius. Well, Alex, initially, Alex, our technical director, was kind of doing it initially, but then we've got this other guy in, Simon, and he's just a... Wow. brain the size of a planet. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of collaboration that's required uh, between, you know, level designers and the engine builder and stuff. You know, how, how big is your team? The actual Media Molecule team is... God, it's. I think we're probably at about forty or fifty people now, in, including you know HR and all that uh -huh. kind of stuff. So, still relatively small compared to some of the larger teams. Sure. But um, yeah, we had this ambition when we started Media Molecule to stay at about ten people, but that was just unrealistic for the <laughs> for the things that we we're doing. It's like, but, oh crap, our game sold well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh crap, we're gonna have to hire more people, aren't <laughs> yeah. we? <laughs> but we've we've still managed to maintain like a really nice sort of family atmosphere in, in yeah. the place I like to think. There are a couple of people where I do struggle to remember their names and things, but I've always been a bit like that anyway, so very cool. Um, you know it's it's I think another cool thing that's going to happen in this game is that there's cooperative building of environments and things, you know, even asymmetrically. Yeah, where yeah. someone could just make textures and, and levels and platforms yeah. all day long, and then another person could take those and put them into a map. And I feel like <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. going to be this collaboration with friends. I really hope you so. See, you know, you would see it in like a Minecraft or some other games yeah. that really extend the useful life of a game that you know has this building mechanic. Well, I'd, I'd hope that you could collaborate with people that aren't even your friends and then maybe you become yeah. friends. That, you know, that would be exactly. super cool. But yeah, exactly like you say, with, you know, you could be an author and want to make the whole thing. You could do the whole game, everything. Or you could just be like, no, I'm a, I make trees. That's my thing. So you could sculpt these beautiful trees and then other people can find your trees and use those to make their game. Or you can make music, sound effects, etc. And actually, we have a experience points system in the game. So if you're playing or creating, we, we measure the <laughs> things that you're doing. So you could actually be, get a lot of experience points as an animator. So that's really good for collaboration, because when you're searching for somebody to collaborate, you go, well, I'm looking for an animator, so show me the people that are, have so done a lot of animating. If, if you create anything, right, like you, I could create like a music loop. Yeah. And then if someone uses that loop in their creation, do I get experience points? You get credit for I that. get credit you'll for get, that? You'll get experience points for the act of actually making it. Oh, okay. But then when you make something and send it out into the, the dream universe... I'm like part of the creator of yeah, that? Yeah, it, it, it retains the, the author. So if I, um, if I make a game and use lots of different components from different people, all those people get the kudos and the credit for that. And if you, when you publish something, you can also say that it's remixable or not. So you're allowing people to take a copy of it and then you know, iterate on it or subvert it, do horrible things to it, but it sort of remembers the history of everyone that worked on it. So yeah, yeah I thought that was really crucial. So unfortunately, we have to wrap up our interview. Oh wow, and like I, went you so know, quickly. When I was talking to you <laughs> yeah. off camera about it, I was like, I find it almost impossible. We didn't get to speak. <laughs> but that's okay, I was actually, uh, so Asif and I live very close together and he's been raving about this game for weeks. I was here mostly for the conversation. Uh -oh. I wanted to learn more about the game. Oh, okay. Well, you should drop by and he's, give you a he, demo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's, he's my Andy Richter for this one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, I, we, uh, I, I was gushing about this game in my preview for it. Also, I, I said it was one of the most ambitious video games I've seen in like a decade. Yeah, it's definitely ambitious. Yeah, uh, because it's, uh, I, I worry it's almost too damn smart. It's almost too damn good. Like we almost don't deserve it. It has, it has that level of attention to detail. He's a big fan. Yeah, I can fan. tell. Uh, well, that's, so no, that's, I'm, I'm honored. But yeah, I'm 
very much so looking forward to it. You don't have a release date yet, right? We're releasing a public beta this year. Okay. It'll be towards the end of the year, I imagine. But we'd try, I'd do it now if it was up to me, but we can't. Awesome. And then, obviously, as soon as possible after that will be the, the boxed version. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for making the time to stop by the Shack News. Pleasure. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to toss it back to our, our folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have some more developer interviews coming by real quickly. So stay locked into the Shack News Twitch.